Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Mamie and this is Mamie's Journey where I take you guys along with me on my life's adventures and journeys. If this is your guys' first time, hello, welcome. And if you guys are returning, I am so sorry it has been so long. Guys, I have been gone on a little bit of a hiatus. I just gave birth to my baby girl just a couple days ago so she is fresh and she is napping right now so that is why she's with me. Um, but I did want to do this video because I've heard from a lot of you guys who are super excited about getting started in your flight attendant journey. You guys are either starting your face-to-face -face interviews soon, or you guys are actually starting training soon, or you recently finished training. Um, and these are just some things that I wish I would have taken into consideration prior to choosing my base. So I think that they would be helpful for you as well. So let's get started in these and let's hop into it. The five things you should take into consideration before choosing your base as a flight attendant. If you see me looking down, it's because I wrote it down in my notes so I don't forget the order. Um, now the first one, are you willing to move? Guys, this is huge. Um, whether or not you are willing to move is going to make a drastic difference in change um, on your experience overall, right? Because if you are willing to move to whichever place you get based, that means that you are not going to be a commuter. That means that you are going to have a ton of extra free time on your hands and you don't have to really worry about going and getting to work um, in the state that you work at, right? If you are a commuter or if you aren't going to be moving to the base in which you are going to be working out of, then you are going to have a lot less time on your hands and there's a lot more things that you're going to have to take into, into consideration when it comes to getting to and from work. So that's the first thing. Are you or are you not willing to move and change states and go wherever you're going to be based, right? The second thing you need to take into consideration for every single base that you are looking at and considering is the average cost of living. Are you going to be making enough hours on average to live in the place in which you are interested in possibly moving to? If not, are you going to be okay with commuting? And if that's what you're going to do, you need to look at the options for commuters, right? And whether or not you're going to have to pick up a certain amount of hours in order to make that work. So huge thing to take into consideration, right? Because the cost of living in Texas is going to be a lot different than the cost of living in Seattle or the cost of living in New York, right? Much, much different. The fourth thing, and this is a huge one, guys, um, responsibilities outside of work. Oh my gosh, let me go back. Number three, <laughs> Sorry, my mom brain is still still going. I have pregnancy brain, it's lingering. Okay, number three, are you planning on having roommates? Are you planning on living alone? Are you planning on having a crash pad? Or are you planning on like living with family or friends, right? These are things to take into consideration and things that you should think about when it comes to whether or not you're going to be based in the place that you're going to live or if you're going to move to the, the place that you're going to be based in or if you're going to be commuting. Because if you plan on having a crash pad, then that's going to be far cheaper if you're a commuter, right? If you're not a commuter and you plan on living at a crash pad, that's also still going to be way, way, way cheaper. If you plan on staying with family and you are going to be a commuter or you're okay with commuting and you have family or friends that you can stay with, that's going to be significantly cheaper than having to have your own place, right? If that is something that you do plan on doing and having your own place, you do want to look at the cost of living, how many hours um, you're typically going to get assigned and how many hours you might need to pick up depending on where you're going to be living. But definitely take into consideration what places you can go to where you possibly have people already living there where you could potentially stay with them or, you know, have a roommate there, something of that sort. Lots of things to take into consideration when it comes to choosing your bases, because if you don't want to live on your own, 
and you want a roommate, well then this is now the time to start talking to people in training and figuring out like, do you guys want to be roommates? Do you guys vibe well? Um, do you know, do you want to move to a different place together? Like, are you guys both open to trying out a new state? I know lots of people from my flight attendant class who decided to become roommates and try out a new state together. So that could be a really fun opportunity for you. Huge thing to take into consideration. On to number four now, for real. <laughs> Responsibilities outside of work. This is huge, right? So a lot of us have responsibilities outside of work. What they might be is completely up to you, but you need to stop and think about this before choosing your base because this is going to help you determine whether or not you are going to be able to be a commuter or whether or not you need to live in base or just help you try to figure out your time management, right? So do you have animals or plants to take care of outside of work? If you have animals, you are going to want to hopefully be a decent animal parent and be able to check in and feed them and bathe them and make sure that you're giving them the love and attention that they deserve. Do they need to be let out? Are they dogs or are they cats where they don't need to be let out? So lots of things to take into consideration if you do have animals. Um, are you a plant mom? Do you have, you know, plants or a plant dad who needs to take care of their, you know, their plants? Do you have actual children who need to be tended to? Do you have people who can oversee your children? Do you have a nanny? Do you have a partner who is going to be able to step in? Are you the primary care provider? How old are your children? Lots of things to consider when it comes to that. Do you have a house to oversee? Do you have school to tend to? Like if you are planning on going back to school or if you are currently in school, this is a huge thing to think about because it does take a lot of time to commute. Now, granted, if you are a commuter and you are having to take a flight, that is time spent on a flight where you could be studying potentially. If you're able to like download any PDFs or readings or anything like that, that you do have to study for. But if you do have to be physically either in class or you have to be able to log on and be online during a certain time, that's a huge thing to stop and think about on whether or not you're going to be able to be a commuter or have to live in base, right? And then the last thing, guys, and this is a thing that I personally think is the most important to take into consideration before becoming, or beco not before becoming a flight attendant, slightly, right? But also before choosing your base and that's your reason why so why did you choose this position and this career path in the first place right now you want to make sure that where whatever you choose to do when it comes to selecting the place that you're going to be based in make sure that it's going to actually allow you to fulfill your purpose in this position and your reason why because if it doesn't then it can be very disheartening and be very hard to stay upbeat and happy about this position if you don't feel like you are being able to actually do the thing that you wanted to do right in the first place so stop and think about your reason why you know a lot of people wanted to travel and that's, you know, a major reason a lot of people start this position. You know, like, oh, I want to travel. I want to see the world. That's wonderful. Now stop and think about whether or not you wanted to see the world with the people that you know and love, like your friends and family, um, because that means that that's time that you're going to need outside of work, right? Which means you're going to need extra time outside of work. And that's a lot harder to do if you are a commuter. Whereas if you just wanted to travel and see the world and you were okay with doing that, alongside of your crew and actually during work then that's very different it doesn't matter whether you're a commuter or whether you actually live in base because you're going to be traveling to see the world regardless right so that's a huge huge thing another part that moves into um that reflecting of why is did you want to do this job for more free time? Now, I think this is a huge thing that a lot of people talk about when it comes to being a flight attendant because our schedules are very different. It's amazing. 
you know, you start your day and then you're working maybe like two or three days all in at one time. And then maybe you have like three to four days off before you work again. And that's really amazing. Sometimes you're doing quick short flights and sometimes you have one long flight, but then you have like a 24, you know, or, you know, or possibly 48 hour layover in somewhere like London or Paris or whatever. So something like that is amazing if you are okay with that lifestyle. But if you didn't do this position because you wanted to, you know, explore and be outside of the house um, for extended periods of time, maybe you did this position because you wanted more time with your loved ones, with your friends and family, then living in base is going to be a huge thing for you. So you're going to really want to take that into consideration. So if you do end up having to commute, choosing a state that is going to be easy for you to commute to is going to be a huge, huge thing because I'm going to be the person who rips off the bandaid and just tells you like it is. Commuting is not for the weak for, or for the faint of heart, right? This is not an easy thing to do. I was commuting. I am now based where I live, but prior to my first year of flight attending, I was commuting and it was very difficult. It can take a lot of time and a lot of strain, you know, on your daily life because you are going to have to be in base sometimes the day before or sometimes the day after you're scheduled. And in the beginning, if you don't have a lot of say so over your schedule, that can, you know, take away from a lot of that time that you would originally get to spend with your loved ones. Now, another thing that that plays into that if you are doing this in order to you know gain time with your friends and your family and your loved ones you need to remember that as a flight attendant especially as a new coming flight attendant that you're not going to have a lot of say so on necessarily the days in which you work so coming in you could have 15 days off you know during the month which is awesome but if those days are like Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, then you might not be able to spend time with the ones that you love if they only have the weekends off, right? Or if there are holidays that you're hoping to spend with your loved ones and your family, you might not necessarily get those off in the beginning. And so those are some things just to take into consideration and, you know, it's huge, huge to take into consideration when it comes to choosing and selecting your base. But those are the five things that I had for you guys today. I hope that this was helpful for you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys do have any more questions, feel free to go ahead and leave them down below. Congratulations to those of you guys who have been reaching out to me about your guys' face-to-faces starting very soon. And if you guys do have any questions, please, please do not hesitate to reach out. I love hearing from you guys and I love hearing the, about the success that you guys are finding in this career or even about the hardships that you might be having. And I love giving you guys words of advice if I can in any way. So I look forward to speaking to you guys in my next video and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!